Anybody feel like you really need him? Oh, we need him. We need him. We need him every day and every hour. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You may be seated. So wonderful to see you and to know that we desperately need him. We can't make good decisions without him. We need him every day. We need him just to hold the sanity of our minds. We need him to bless our relationships. We need him to just to guide our feet. We need him to heal our bodies. We, we need him. We just need him. We need him to protect our children. We need him. We need him. We need him. We need him to help, him, help us in our relationships. We just, we just need him in every area and arena in our life. We need him to help break every vice and every addiction every bad habit that tries to pull our lives down. We just need him. We need him. We need him in an incredible way. And uh, I'm glad that your heart is in passionate pursuit of him. What a wonderful joy it is to be able to just worship the King of kings and Lord of lords and magnify him and glorify him. Let him know that he is the one and only God for us whom we extol. Well, if you would open your Bibles to the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, Romans chapter 7. I am teaching in this session uh, on the 18-inch war, the 18-inch war, which is essentially the distance between your heart and your head to help us in those different situations in which we find ourselves at various junctions in our life of where our head tells us one thing and our heart tells us something differently and a battle ensues and what on, on earth do you do to try to resolve that war and to have peace in the midst of that so I want you to see that the wonderful anointed Apostle Paul who was chosen by the Holy Ghost. You remember when Judas committed suicide and they needed a replacement for Judas, they cast lots and lots fell on this man by the name of Matthias. But that was man's doing. God's choice was the Apostle Paul. And uh, we see the grace of God and the power of God beginning to work in his life in an incredible way and so now as Paul is writing to the church at Rome he begins to talk about this struggle this particular internal war uh, the internal wars of what we call civil wars where there's something warring in your own members and uh, all of us every human being experiences this kind of war so notice, beginning with verse 14, Romans chapter 7 and verse 14, notice these words. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now this is the apostle. This, this is not just a bench member. <laughs> this is the apostle who's writing the epistle to the church, and he's saying, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. You ever done something you don't even understand it? Have you ever done something habitually and you don't understand why you keep doing it? You don't even understand it, how you find yourself in this position all over again when you said you'd never come back here? I just want you to see here how real the Apostle Paul is with us. I, I appreciate his transparency because it brings a relevancy into human nature that has not changed in thousands of years. In fact, this is the same Adamic nature that was in Adam who was in the Garden of Eden. The same nature Adam dealt with the same battle between the head and the heart. The head and the heart. He had the same 18-inch war. It's a short uh, distance, but it can seem like a million miles when you have not integrated the two into a system of belief that will guard and govern your life. So 
We know that the law is spiritual, but he says, I am carnal, sold under sin, for what I am doing I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that's what I do. Now, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law, that it is good, with the law, that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, in the carnal nature of the mind, which has not been born again. Your spirit is born again, but your mind is not born again. And so notice verse 17, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will do, will to do, I do not do, but the evil that I will not to do, that I practice. That's what I end up doing. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Warring, here's that war going on again. The 18 inch war. The heart, the spirit, and the mind are at war one with another. And bringing me notice into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now here is the great Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and he is having an internal civil war battling that's 18 inches. You don't have to go halfway around the world to war. You can war in your own bedroom with your cell phone in your hand. You can have a war sitting in front of your computer and your head trying to lead you into places where you shouldn't go and your heart trying to guide you according to the ways of God and having a war. Because you know that most of the time that individuals do wrong, it is not a, a, a situation where they don't know that it's wrong. They know the right thing. When you know the right thing, something scratches you down in, on the inside. Something begins to bother you and to let you know this is not the way to go. And uh, so that there, are, there are too many Christians that never resolve this war. And so they live as what I call bipolar Christians. There is a polarity. And they, they live as bipolar Christians. They're one way sometimes, and then the other time, they're, they're totally over here. And what they wanted to do, they, they, they don't find themselves doing that. But what they didn't want to do, that's the very thing that they find themselves doing. And they've got this war. Every time that they make a major decision, here is the war between the two, the internal 18-inch war. A woman sees a man. She has a war. Her eyes look at him and size him up and say, he, he, he looks good. 